Check the description for the following discount codes. Okay, okay. Nobody needs triple screens before angry people in the comments tell me that's not the case. Just like no one needs, you know, a thousand pound wheelbase or a VR headset or a motion system. We don't need any of those things to have a good time sim racing. But by the end of this video, you will see why you might want a set of triples and ideally a large set of triples if you can as well. Now there's many options when it comes to size and pricing and performance of different displays. If you decide you want triples in your life, obviously you can choose those based on your budget, your space, because this takes up a huge amount of space to have these triple 55s um, and your own individual requirements. But today we'll look at what I've got, which is triple 55s. And in fact, let me just um, get rid of these windows for a second. That was only really so you could see the screens sort of quite clearly in the background there to start the video. Less, slightly less so with the wallpaper that I actually use, but I wanted to I wanted you to see really just how much space and um, sort of viewable area you get. Now, speaking of viewable areas, as humans, our field of view is around 210 degrees. So if your arms were back parallel with you, that would be 180 degrees, we can actually see a little bit further back than that in our very, in the very edge of our peripheral vision. You can test this, you know, it varies slightly from person to person, but roughly 210. You can test this by putting your arms and then looking forward, but just going back and back and back until you can't see your fingertips anymore. Now, in a perfect world, when it comes to simulation, which is us trying to reproduce real life as best as we can within the limitations of physics and what we have, we would like 210 degrees field of view from our displays. The reality of that is, probably the last 20 degrees, 30 degrees are well out of focus. And even if there is a car creeping up beside you, whether you'd notice it in the very edge of your peripheral vision or not, is another matter, who knows. But what I've got here gives me pretty much 190, 200 degrees. The seat is actually further back than I would normally sit in its current position. It would actually sit slightly further forward. And my head would be kind of around here, which is slightly inside of where these displays finish. So I do have almost, you know, human field of view with these triple 55s. Now, there's a couple of things we need to talk about. What, what we'll do in the video is some back-to-back -back comparisons, um, comparing a single display to triple, to triple displays and of varying sizes in case you're wondering where the video is going. That's what I'm going to be doing. The easiest way of doing this is showing you, let's say, ACC set up here. In fact, I might as well get it loading up now. And then what I'll do is turn off the side displays. So you'll see what we have available with triple screens running. You'll see what is visible in those side screens that you won't then have when we turn the side displays off. Now, something you need to know about sim racing, whether it's single display or triple display, the positioning of you relative to your monitor or TV, whatever it is you're using, that's a little bit loud, turn that down, is super important. Because what you want is the race world in which we are in to look as realistic from a scaling point as possible. I.e., when you're sat in your racing rig, whatever cockpit it might be, even if you're sat on a chair using a controller, in a perfect world, you still want things scaled correctly. What do I mean by that? What I mean is when you're sat there in whatever it is configuration you've got, the, the racetrack in front of you, your dashboard on your display, the size of the cars on the track behind you, in front of you and side by side if you have triples, look to be a lifelike size and scale so they look realistic. What you don't want, for example, is let's say you've only got a single display in the middle, is for you to pull your field of view back so far in the game settings that you can see your wing mirrors on that center display because that's something you can't see if it's set correctly. And everything looks absolutely tiny and like your dashboard is like four meters in the distance and you're sat 
you know, like on the, on the boot of the car, looking down towards your dash, because you made everything so small to fit it on your display. Now, this is where bringing your display as close to you as possible comes into play, because that will increase your field of view. Obviously, you don't want it here, because you won't be able to focus. And if you've got a really small display, I don't know, 22 inch monitor, or let's go stupid, mobile phone screen, right? No matter how close you get that to your face, you're still not gonna have a massive field of view because it'd be so close you couldn't focus. And obviously the vertical uh, field of view is gonna be small as well because it's only a small display. And I'm gonna try and replicate all that in this video by using some black sort of masks to, um, in Adobe Premiere, not actually sticking them on the screen. So we can shrink the screen size and see exactly what it looks like because when you set up your field of view in your sim racing title, ACC for example, you have to input the size of the display, how big the display is, and how far your eyes are from that display so that it com correctly displays the image scaled so it looks realistic. How it would look if you were sat in your car in real life, how big does my dashboard look? It looks this big. That's what it calculates and that's how it displays it on your chosen display. So. Whether you've got a 55 inch display or a 30 inch display, if it is sat the same distance from you, the image on that display will be physically the same size if you've input the calculations correctly. So what that would mean is if you went from a 55 inch display down to a 30 inch display, you would lose an awful lot of what we can see here. So in fact, let's just fire up race. I'm going to turn this GoPro on to try and capture kind of what I'm, sh what I'm displaying here. Now the issue we do have with this is that the GoPro, even on its super view, doesn't do 210 degrees. So I'm just going to turn this on now and I'll just pan it left to right and if you look, we can't, there's still peripheral vision to the left there and peripheral vision to the right. Actually, you know, quite a bit, all things considered. So this, what, we're, what you're gonna see is, is slightly less than what I can see in real life. Now, let's have a little goosey. Um, and what's even funnier is I'm gonna be using this wireless keyboard to accelerate and steer and change gear because I don't wanna be sat in the rig in front of the camera. I wanna try and capture as much of what you can see as possible. So don't judge my driving, it's obviously gonna be bad. Um, so yeah, let's just fire it up at the beginning here. Straight away, you can see we've got the wing mirrors. Wing mirror on the left-hand display over here. We have a wing mirror on the right-hand display over there and the rear view mirror actually ends up on that display also. So let's just stick it in gear and try and accelerate. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeah, so already, if I was to now turn off those side displays, we'd have no mirrors whatsoever, no wing mirrors, no rear view mirror, which is already quite a lot to lose. And as I say, the scaling has to be set correctly for the size of your displays. And in fact, if I just, you can see that car to the right of me there on that right hand display, you wouldn't see that at all, and again, if we watch a few come past, you wouldn't see this car that's here, let's let them come past now, until now. So there's a good couple of seconds there where if you have triples, you have a clear advantage. Not only do you see the car in your mirror, but you see it in your peripheral vision before you'd see it on your, what's called the center display, your primary display. So that gives you a clear advantage over other sim racers that don't have triples. And this is why some of you that don't have it or that have never used triples may well want triples after watching this video because it gives you a clear advantage over other competitors. Now, yes, you can put virtual mirrors on your primary display, both rear view and side mirrors in a lot of sim racing titles, but you cannot replace, you cannot put on there your peripheral vision whereby you physically see the car coming up beside you before 
it appears on the primary display. Now I'm just pausing here for a second. If you look on the left hand display here, we can actually see, so here's our corner. It's a very sharp corner. You can't see dick all on the center display. If you're not familiar with this track, this stage, you know, depending on what game you're playing, how do you know how sharp the corner is? How do you know where it goes just by having a center display? The answer is you don't. If you have triples, we can simply look out the left hand, what would be window of your car in real life, you can see where the road, where the track goes. And you can adjust your racing line, the speed you've approached it at, the gear you're in, and you'd also be aware of any other vehicles, you know, sort of on the inside of you. That, all that information is on this left hand screen here, and you would not have it should you only have a single display. So, on that note, I'm gonna grab the remote control for my TVs, and I'm gonna turn off the two side displays to really illustrate this. There we go. The two side displays are off. Now, me standing here, all of a sudden, I feel extremely claustrophobic, like someone's just come in and put the blinkers on either side of my eyes. I can't see anything. No mirrors, I have no idea what's happening around that left-hand corner, and I have no idea what's happening to the right-hand side of my vehicle either. So let's just drive. I mean, look, you still can't see much until you really point straight forward. And then it's like, okay, now I can see what's going on a little bit better. But this, these cars coming up on the left of me that you just see come past there, I have no clue that they're there. I mean, yeah, you get call-outs uh, as well in, in certain titles but it isn't like being able to see them in your peripheral vision. Getting that little bit of movement, catch your eye, and then the ability to turn your head. See, we have no idea he was there until he was in front of us almost. And look and catch these vehicles. Honestly, it feels so strange going back to just having a single screen here after having this triple set up for ages. And what you see in front of us now is a 55 inch display. That is still a lot bigger than what a lot of sim racers will have, unless you're playing like on your front room TV, for example. It's probably a lot bigger than what a lot of sim racers would have. And as I mentioned earlier, and in fact, I'm just gonna kind of park the car here and demonstrate this hopefully in Adobe. As I mentioned earlier, when you downsize your monitor, you can't adjust the scaling, right? The scaling has to stay the same if the monitor is the same distance from you. The idea is, like I say, you're putting the monitor size, you're putting the distance it is from you, and you also position its height so that your eyes are in the center of the display, there. That way everything horizon-wise is correct. You don't want your world up here or your world down there. So let's say we change from a 55 down to a 32, for example. Hopefully, you'll now see this I'll be able to have done it in Adobe, what we actually lose. Now, because you have to keep it in the center of your vision, we lose graphical information from not only the top and the sides, but we lose it from the bottom. We lose it from all four sides. So part of the dash is now missing, I'm gonna assume, because I'm standing here speaking, obviously I'm gonna do it in post. Part of the dash is actually missing. Are we even able to see all the information, you know, our engine RPM, our gear, uh, our tire temperatures, our, our race time, you know, is that all still visible? I'm gonna guess that a lot of that is actually missing now. And of course, what you can't do, as I mentioned earlier, is just zoom out and make it smaller. I mean, you physically can do it, but if you do that, then everything is now incorrectly scaled and your depth perception and your feeling of speed is completely unrealistic and completely off. So this is where, you know, in some cases, you might use like a tablet, for example, you know, on your sim racing rig to display a digital dashboard because perhaps you're using a smaller display and it doesn't allow you to see your real, or your virtual dash, so to speak, in the cockpit. These are all things you need to consider and why choosing a larger display, the, almost the bigger the bill. Well, from a single screen point of view, the bigger the better is the answer. From a triple screen point of view, you can actually go too big. And what happens there is the width of your center screen, if you go too big, can be wider 
than the width of some sort of narrow single seater cars, in which case you can't actually see like the dash or even perhaps the wheels because they would need to be displayed kind of in here, for example, uh, and you can't do it because the display is too wide, if, if you get what I mean. So <clears throat> having chatted to other sim racers, 55 seems to be kind of the sweet spot. I know Will at Boosted Media, for example, have had a conversation about this and he said it in his own videos, he would go triple 55s again, given the choice, because triple 65s, he's encountered this issue with single seater cars that are quite narrow. And it makes sense because you don't have, you can't display anything inside, like in this space here, because your displays aren't there. So the further you take those side screens away from you, the bigger this open space is that can't have anything displayed in it. And again, you can't adjust the scaling so that you can see, like let's take a single seater example. If you can't see the wheels, for example, because you've gone too wide on your, you know, that's 10 inches more for 55, 65, and you can't see the wheels, if you then adjusted the graphic scaling so that the wheels appeared on these side screens, which is where they would be on a narrower setup, you'd have just made that car wider in appearance than it actually is in real life. So unrealistic again, you'd have stretched it out. And of course the wheels won't look like the correct size, everything will be off. And this is why, you know, you can't just grab a set of triples and go, I want the front one here, and I want my two ones at 90 degrees because you have to do the calculations. I've got a whole video explaining how to do these calculations and set them up correctly. Uh, I'll link it in the description. You must do your calculations based on the size of your display and based on the distance at which you sit from that display. And it must of course be your eyes in the center of the display. This is all of course in an ideal world. If you can't do it because you're using your front room TV and it's mounted on the wall, the height it's at is the height it's at, so on and so forth, that's absolutely fine. We all have to do the best we can with what we have available. So there's no issues there. But when we're talking, you know, building a sim rig or a sim room or setting something up to be as realistic as possible, and you do have the option to go triple screens, you can see now that clear advantage over a single screen setup and I know some, some people in the comments are gonna go, Carl, triples are obsolete because VR. Well, that's a load of bollocks, right? The clear advantage, there are many advantages over VR with triples. There are advantages with VR over triples. Did I just say that the wrong way around? There's advantages to both, pros and cons to both, right? The clear advantage to having triples is field of view. In my case, I've got human eye field of view, 200, 210 degrees. An average VR headset, so let's say here's my 210, an average VR headset would be about 105. That is literally half, so about here somewhere. And if you've got a VR headset, you'll know this to be true. There is very much this tunnel vision effect and we get used to it and it's fine because that's where the technology's at these days. For most VR headsets, Pimax users are gonna be quite happy with their stretched warped image on the old 8KX and 5K Super. Um, the crystal, of course, doesn't actually have a particularly wide field of view in spite of its huge size, but an average VR headset, 105, I think the Quest 3 measured about 110, which is quite wide for a, you know, sort of normal VR headset. But yeah, that's still kind of like this versus this with triples, you know. It's the difference between having those blinkers on and having them off, like we demonstrated here earlier. And again, if we look now, you know, we can say, I mean, we're not in the best position so let's just move around where it's a bit more light but you know looking now you can see the wing mirrors both sides you can see the rear view mirror on that right hand side and as we approach this corner here I'll just pull over so to speak and turn off the side displays and again we're going to lose so there we are we can see the corner sweeping around to the left here we can see the wing mirrors and then if we go um, with just the center display, all of a sudden those blinkers are back on and you can't see anywhere near what you could before. Now, if you've got smaller displays than the 55s I have here, uh, you might be thinking, oh, I can't, I'm not gonna get the same benefit. Well, that isn't strictly true. 
you can move those displays closer. If you look where my sim rig is currently sat, it's actually sitting down because I have a motion system from Race at Home, five Dolph PT actuator one, and it would sit higher if I powered it up, but it's off for this video because it isn't necessary. But the distance front to back is correct. It is sat in the center position. Now I've got clearance here of maybe, I don't know, two foot perhaps. So 60 centimeters from my display to where I could put it. Now the reason for that is because my rig moves forwards and backwards and left to right and up and down. I have to leave a huge amount of space around it so that my aluminium profile rig, my GT Amiga Prime, doesn't smash my displays when I'm racing, especially in rally where things get a bit leery. So if you haven't got the money for triple 55s, and bear in mind, these might be OLED 120 Hertz 4K displays, you don't need that. You can pick up you know, let's say you pick up three 42 inch 1080p 60 hertz displays, perhaps second hand. They go for maybe 50 quid a pop these days. You know, they're cheap and you can still make a great experience and you wouldn't have to have them as far away as me because you haven't got a motion system. So you would bring your center display right forward to sort of here above the uprights on your rig, if you had an aluminum profile rig or whatever rig it might be. And then your, your 40 inches, yeah, it would be narrower, but then your side displays would be tucked in further because what you'll realize when you do these calculations is the further away your center screen is, the greater or the, the greater the angle from center, the side displays have to be. The closer that center screen is to you, the more your side displays can actually come in. Again, it's not something you can just do. You need to do the calculations for things to be geometrically correct. Also, just bear in mind in this video, we're, when I do the through the GoPro footage, it is using a fisheye lens. Everything's gonna look a bit distorted, a bit warped, and the scaling's gonna look completely off. That's just the GoPro. That is obviously not how it looks to me when I'm sat in the rig. I mean, that's kind of common sense, but I have to mention it because someone in the comments will go, oh, that all looks well warped and distorted, Cole. Yeah, no shit, it's the GoPro. It's literally what a fisheye lens does. But you have to cover these things because people will say otherwise. Um, no offense to the people with common sense. <clears throat> but yeah, you could get three second hand displays, 40 inches, 42 inches, whatever you can pick up really. Try and get three of the same manufacturer and, mo and model or very close to so that the color performance <clears throat> and the brightness performance and the response times are obviously all as close together as possible as well, ideally all the same. But this also goes for buying new. If you can find, because these days you won't get 55 inch TVs in 1080p. I don't think they produce such a low res in this size. You may still be able to get them in you know, 40 inches or 36 inches or whatever, in which case go the 1080p route. Don't get hung up on resolution because when you're in the heat of battle, the last thing you are doing is counting the pixels on your screen or looking how jagged the edges are because you haven't got your anti-aliasing up because you're only running it on a RTX 2080 and not a 4090. Don't worry about that. The, the most immersive thing you can do in sim racing is to have a display set up that puts you in that world and allows you to turn your head and see a car in your peripheral vision or look around the apex of a corner to make sure you're online. It's, it's literally like you could have all the best motion in the world, but if you've got a single 24 inch display in them, it ain't gonna feel realistic, is it? Not, you know, it's, it's, it's just not. VR headsets, are, you know, they add depth to the whole immersive experience, but they do obviously, you know, give you that that narrow field of view, and it's not comparable to wearing a crash helmet. I wear crash helmets all summer long. Um, one of the things crash helmets try to do is give you the best peripheral field of view possible because you want to be able to see other road users or in racing other vehicles, competitors on track. They don't give you a VR headset uh, narrow field of view. Um, but you know, anyway, neither here nor there. Today, I'm showing you why you might want a triple screen setup and why a bigger display is better than a smaller display. I hear some people say online, what, what, what's the ideal size for triples? And people might say 32, people might say 36. There is no ideal, the answer really is the bigger, the better, up to about this sort of size because of what I explained earlier, if you happen to be using a narrow single seater vehicle and then all of a sudden it needs to be in this space here, 
and there's no displays in this space, so you can't see the vehicle you're in. And if you scaled it properly and couldn't see anything, it would feel like you're just floating along the racetrack. It would be quite funny, actually. But you know what I mean? You literally wouldn't see the sides of your vehicle, and you may not even see the dash if it was you know, going to be really close to you because it's impossible to scale it correctly when the display you're looking at is too far away. And the same goes for the sides. But hopefully, this video has been interesting and shown you why in 2024, triple screens is still very much something you could aspire to want. Um, if A, you wanna have a competitive advantage, or B, you want to be as immersed in the world of racing as you possibly can be. And also bear in mind, you can do it on a budget. Secondhand displays, 1080p, 60 hertz. Some people are gonna say 60 hertz isn't competitive, Carl. It doesn't refresh fast enough. Maybe if you're that top, top 1% of the elite sim races, you might be um, right in saying that. For me and for a lot of people, we're not that good. So 60 hertz would be absolutely fine. And as I say, it doesn't have to be 55s. You can go down to 40s, perhaps even 32s, you know, and get them as close as you can. But don't forget, one of the things you do lose when you go smaller is the height of the display. And as I had demonstrated earlier, you will lose um, what you can see from all around that display. Negate it, of course, a little bit by pulling it closer towards you. Um, but yeah, the answer to Sizing is go as big as you can, I would say, and others up to about 55 inch, and do whatever you can afford, you know? Play around. If you can only afford small secondhand ones, go that way. But hopefully, today, you know, not everyone can, I was lucky LG sent me these, as some of you may know, so I would never have bought them otherwise, because at the time, I think they were 1,500 quid each, I would never have spent four and a half grand on triple displays you know I had one 55 inch at the time that I used and that and I was more than happy with that so you don't have to go you know crazy you don't have to have a, a motion system I'm mean, again I was lucky race at home lend me this it's not mine it's just on a loan and um, you know you you do the best you can but hopefully you'll see why you might want to try and get a triple screen set up VR is not for everybody pros and cons as well uh, and also you'd have seen why setting your field of view for what display you have, i.e. the distance it is from you, the size of the display, and entering that into the sim racing title will give you the correct scaling and the correct visual experience to be as sort of realistic as possible. So yeah, hopefully uh, some of you have found this waffle interesting, and hopefully I've been able to show and display everything as best as I can. This GoPro using the super view to try and get this all in, I really don't know how it's gonna look when I get it on the computer and edit it, so I apologize if it doesn't look very good. But hopefully you can still see the difference between having a single display and the triples on. Um, otherwise this video may never go out. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching and take it easy.